<clears throat> thank you. And senators and ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. And thank you for inviting me to speak. More than half of all of the women murdered globally each year die at the hands of partners or other family members. More than half. Violent and controlling behavior in the home is a terrifying reality for families everywhere, including in our homes in America. But we have the democratic right in our country, which so many others do not have, to change our laws, to insist that they are updated and strengthened and upheld. And that is why it's so painful that we've gone nearly a decade without Congress being able to agree to reauthorize the Violence Against Women Act. All of us advocates and survivors are hoping to finally get reauthorization over the line this time. None of us is naive. We know that this is politics. But to senators considering this legislation, I say, please understand that we know as a medical fact that when children witness and experience domestic violence, it is child abuse and can cause long-term toxic stress and trauma. And we know that 800 children have been murdered in the United States since 2008 after being forced back into unsafe contact with an abusive parent by an uninformed and broken legal system. Children like Caden in Pennsylvania and Peaky in California. And yet still, Judges deciding custody cases generally are not required to have training on domestic violence, lethality risks, and trauma effects on children. We know that bruising is one of the most common types of soft tissue injury experienced by domestic violence survivors and that abuse survivors of color are more likely than white survivors to experience bruising that is barely visible or entirely invisible to the naked eye, despite significant harm and pain they experienced during the assault. And yet still, most first responders do not have access to alternative light source technology that is five times more effective at detecting bruising across all skin tones than the white light. And most bruise diagnosis and detection is still carried out by sight, leaving many survivors unable to prove that they are experiencing high-risk, lethal behavior from someone inside their home. And we know that Native American and Alaska Native women face disproportionately high rates of violence in the majority of cases by non-Native perpetrators. Yet this abuse has continued with impunity because tribal jurisdiction is limited. So we now have the opportunity to pass an act that does a better job of protecting victims of abuse, that requires judges to have training on the trauma effects of domestic violence and to apply legal standards that prioritize children's safety, that funds technology and training to detect bruising across all skin tones to address racial bias in forensic evidence collection. And that restores tribal jurisdiction to over non-native perpetrators of violence. So that is what is at stake in the next few weeks. And please remember that the problem is getting worse that domestic violence has increased by over 25% globally during the pandemic. So please, I would ask anyone listening, do contact your Senator, ask them to reauthorize the Violence Against Women Act with these new protections in it for the sake of families across our country. Thank you.